familiar face showed back up to the Jets training facility for the start of their voluntary off-season workout program. Aaron Rodgers showed up there today to begin workouts for the team. Remember, he tore his Achilles last year. All signs point to him being ready for the start of the season. The Jets are putting an awful lot of hopes on Aaron Rodgers. They need him to be healthy for this upcoming season. And as they continue to host visitors to decide what to do with the 10th overall pick, today they entertain the Georgia tight end Brock Bowers, who is projected to be a top pick in the upcoming draft. The Jets will have options. Tight end will be one of them. And Brock Bowers is a multifaceted weapon that the Jets certainly could find good use for. I'm sure Aaron Rodgers would love to have him. And probably not coincidental that they have Brock Bowers in the first day that Aaron Rodgers is back. I'm sure the two men could get to meet and spend a little bit of time together. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And Adam, if the Jets draft Brock Bowers, he'd have a chance to become just the second first round pick to catch a touchdown pass from Aaron Rodgers. This is crazy. The other is another tight end, Mercedes Lewis, who caught six from Rodgers. In fact, Rodgers has targeted just eight first round picks in his entire career. That includes one pass to Hall of Fame defensive end Julius Peppers and four targets to himself. <laughs> in fact, you guys, I actually, I don't know, Aaron Rodgers is never going to see this, but I actually think if he did, he would kind of like that stat. It's pretty interesting. One of the weird <laughs> research things that we found lately. Shout out to our researcher, Boz. Mina, the Jets have the 10th overall pick in this year's draft. Do you think yeah. they should go for Brock Bowers or should protecting Aaron Rodgers actually be their top priority? This is hard because I love Brock Bowers, but it's often this debate, and this is a debate that is being had uh, amongst Jets fans. It's presented sometimes as Okay, we're all in. Brock Bowers is the all in pick. We can use him immediately versus you build for the future with the offensive linemen. I think that's a false dichotomy, however, because more likely than not, if they take an offensive tackle at 10, he will play. Tyron Smith is great, hasn't played a full season in years. You got Morgan Moses on the other side. You know, they've injuries on that offensive line in the past. Uh, and, and for that reason, I think you want to straddle both worlds the now and the future and go with the linemen, not just to protect Rodgers, which is obviously of the utmost importance, uh, but also because this run game was really hurt by the blocking last year. Brees Hall is a fantastic bag. He was in hell, not just because defenses stacked the box, but that's an offensive line that ranked 32nd dead last in run block win rate last season. Um, so for me, you just got to prioritize the O-line if you're the Jets as tantalizing as Brock Bowers would be. You know, Mina, I don't disagree with the premise there, uh, but I got to give a shout out to Joe Douglas. He's done an amazing job. He's been in his bag like grandma's peppermint this offseason. Fixed the offensive line, got help at wide receiver. The defense is still dominant, and they got a solid backup quarterback in Tyrod Taylor. But when it comes to this draft, the only thing the Jets are missing on this Super Bowl run that they look like they're poised to go on is depth. And because of that, I, I agree that they should draft an offensive lineman. They could, they might be able to get Joe Alt if the quarterback derby goes crazy in the, in the top five. They might be able to get Fuaga, uh, Fashanu out of Penn State. And the reason I say that is because five of the 11 starters for the Jets on their roster right now have had career, or have had season-ending injuries over the past two seasons. But me and I will say this. When you ask Aaron Rodgers what does he want, there's nothing that this guy loves more than weapons. So if you give him a guy like Brock Bowers, he is going to have Brock Bowers, Mike Williams, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson. I mm. mean, the list goes on and on. And that, I think, would blow all Jets fans' minds. And this offense would be really exciting to see. So I don't know. Ugh, I'm torn. I'm torn. But I would still go offensive line. I'm with you, Mina. One thing I do like about Bowers, even though I think we agree we go offensive line, <laughs> is um, you sign Mike Williams, but that's a one-year deal, right? So you do need – I was talking earlier about sort of the present tense and the long term and how they've, they've obviously gone all in with a lot of their signings. However, uh, in Bowers, you would have a complementary skill player to Garrett Wilson – for the long term, it's beyond this year. It is not great value because of the position, but uh, respectfully, he is a, a player who I think transcends positional value. I am that high on him. So I, I wouldn't be angry because I think the player is so unique, so special. He's really an offensive weapon even though I, I would slightly lean offensive line in this case. Yeah, Mina, I think your point is so valued that he's not just a tight end. He does so much and, and really could change an offense just in the variety of his skill set alone. Either way, it's
it's going to be fascinating to see what they do. And one of the things that Brock probably saw today is the Jets' new logo. So new on NFL Live, let's see their new uniforms and the logo they're going to use for the 2024 season. They're calling the new look their legacy collection. Robert, you like the new unis? I, I love the new unis. I mean, uh, we're talking about the Jets being all in. They're going new uniforms. Everybody on Aaron Rodgers' side, he's gotten rid of some of the guys that were tagging along from the Packers. I love the new unis. I think Jets fans should be super excited this year. Woody Johnson says the wait is over, and that's true. They debuted them today. T. Higgins requested a trade and they franchise tagged him. So where does this go? Well, T was asked about the future with the Bengals and here's what he said over the weekend. You anticipate playing for the Bengals this year? We'll see. I do anticipate it. You know, um, since he is I grew, I grew up, you know, I love for Cincy that uh, I didn't think I would, but you know, man, looking forward to it because at first it felt like he was going to try to play it a little cool there and then he's like no actually I think I want to be back there a lot going on though Adam should we expect to see Higgins in a Bengals uniform come September I think right now we should the question is how happy will he be obviously yeah. he has wanted a new contract and with the wide receiver market about to explode on new deals T Higgins isn't going to be any happier about not having a new deal or any contract talks which has been the case in Cincinnati. He and the team have been at an impasse. There really have been no negotiation since last year at all. And until he gets that deal, he's not going to be particularly happy. The question is, is there a team out there in the next 10 or so days, Laura, that mm. is willing to step up to compensate the Bengals and T. Higgins to make a trade happen? If that could happen, then yes, Cincinnati would might be willing to entertain that and move on, and T. Higgins would be happy. But if he's back... In Cincinnati, it's probably without a new deal. Maybe at a time where Jamar Chase is getting a new deal. And there's a lot Ooh. of elements there that make for a very complicated situation. Yeah, you lay it out that way and it does make you wonder. It, you see this on the screen, but the deadline for the long-term deal is July 15th. And you mentioned Jamar Chase. Higgins and Jamar Chase, the only players in Bengals history to record 3,000 receiving yards before turning 25 years old. It speaks to just how good Higgins has been. A lot of people wonder if maybe they could just get by with Jamar Chase. Maybe they'll have to, but uh, what do you make, Adam, thanks by the way, what do you make of this situation, Hawk? I think T. Higgins is the number one receiver. The unfortunate part is that Jamar Chase is also there in Cincinnati, and I think they've both been incredible for Joe Burrow's development to the, the elite quarterback that he is. But the reality is the reality. And if I'm the Cincinnati Bengals, I'm going above and beyond to try to get something in compensation for T. Higgins. Let him go on and be the number one receiver that he has earned. But for them, what you don't want is them keeping him this season. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't get the best version of T. Higgins like you did a year ago. And then he just walks and you get nothing in return. The Bengals have been incredible about finding talent beyond the first round of the draft. They have to trust that in this scenario and see what happens on draft night. Yeah. I think they should take calls, and I think Carolina should be on the phone on mm. the other end. I know they're picking at the top of the second round this year, and there'll be some really interesting wide receivers uh, available to them. But T. Higgins is, to Hawk's point, I totally agree, a true number one. And the likelihood that one of those receivers is T. Higgins, maybe. But in Higgins, you have the bird in hand, and you have the opportunity to put a receiver in your offense right away who should help Bryce Young and help you evaluate Bryce Young. Yeah, whether Higgins is there or not, the goal for all teams in the AFC is to compete with Kansas City, of course. And the Bengals are the only team to beat the Chiefs in the playoffs the last three seasons. So the win came in the 2021 AFC Championship game in a 27 to 24 since he went in overtime. Kansas City 8-0 against everyone else in that time. They got something figured out, I guess. Burrow was on the New Heights podcast with the Kelsey brothers and was asked how the Bengals match up with the Chiefs, saying, quote, I think we match up pretty well with them. I think we're built to beat them. I always appreciate the legendary battles we have. Plenty of confidence from Joe Burrow, as he should. Mina, what do the Bengals need to address in the draft, though, to continue to challenge the Chiefs in the AFC this season? Yeah, assuming Higgins does return, 
I'm not worried about the offense in the short term. Long term, obviously, you have to consider drafting his replacement. Um, I, I have a very unsexy answer for you, <laughs> which is run defense is a problem. It was a mm. huge problem for the Cincinnati Bengals team last year. It was a lost season, obviously, without Burrow. But that defense finished 28th in success rate against the run, 31st in DVOA. And, and they lost uh, a player who I think was – quietly their best run defender in DJ Reader to free agency. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Higgins. I think that'll influence how they use that first overall pick. But uh, I would heavily consider taking a defensive tackle early in this draft um, because that is something that they quietly need to shore up and something that Kansas City has been good at running the football in recent years. I think it's continuing to bolster the offensive line so you keep Joe Burrow protected. Whenever yeah. he's hurt, this is a different football team. You need him in the game. And it's also connected to that T. Higgins conversation because if you are able to find a home for yeah. T. Higgins, you got to go address the wide receiver position. Just look at the history of the Bengals selecting wide receivers beyond the first round from Chad Johnson to T.J. Hushmanzada to Mo Sanu, Marvin Jones. Um, the list goes on and on. T. Higgins. And so I think they have the ability to scout those wide receivers and they can't put all of this on Chase's shoulders and think that that's going to shoulder it for pass catchers for Joe Burrow. It's going to make it a lot harder on their offense to be able to make defenses play them honestly without T. Higgins having control, flare control on the other side of Chase. Yeah, you know, we talked a little bit about the short term, but what about the long term plan on offense? They pick at 18. You wonder who might still be there? Yeah. I mean, if Brock Bowers is there, Duke Tobin has to run to the phone <laughs> or pick up the phone and, and, and like I don't even wait um, because Bowers uh, I actually think it's interesting he, obviously it's a very different skill set from T Higgins but I think he solves a problem that's quietly yeah. plagued not quietly but it's plagued the Bengals at times over the years which is with Jamar Chase they face a lot of too high coverage so Joe Burrow has had to work the middle of the field hmm. and, and we've been talking so much about T Higgins uh, leaving or potentially leaving in the future. Tyler Boyd's not on this football team right now, and he's been right. the answer for them in the slot. So if you get Bowers, suddenly you have a weapon who can work the middle of the field. I think he's a really complimentary piece to Japarn Chase. If you get Brock Bowers, he becomes your number two receiver. That would be an incredible move if he That's, is there, and that would yeah. exactly do the thing that we're talking about, Mina, for this Cincinnati offense. 